Welcome to Podcast 6.1, a new chapter and a new type of bonds, and that is called a covalent bond. Now, up until this time, we've dealt with bonding, right? And as you know, that's between a positive ion and a negative ion, right? And there's this electrostatic attraction, it makes an ionic compound, and it occurs between metals and nonmetals. Well, in real life, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for nonmetals to come together. In fact, living things uh, with carbon and stuff, they are bonding in a different way, and this is covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is simply a bond formed when the atoms share electrons. Now, there still is that driving force of an octet, but uh, they're not being uh, transferred where one is losing an electron and one is gaining an electron. Now they're being shared. For example, let's say, let's say we have water, all right? Now, oxygen has uh, six valence electrons. I'm just going to draw them around like this. I'm kind of alluding to what we're going to do soon. And then here comes hydrogen. Now, hydrogen has one valence electron, right? Well, if hydrogen were to share its electron with oxygen, right, right there, and this hydrogen were to share its electron with oxygen, look what we have. How many valence electrons does oxygen have now? Eight, an octet. However, hydrogen hasn't lost an electron, and oxygen hasn't gained electrons. They're simply sharing. And how many electrons does hydrogen need in its outer energy level? Two, right? Because there's only two electrons that you could put in the 1s orbital. So that's what's going on between nonmetals. They are uh, sharing their bonds. And what you get is this right here, this picture, this molecular orbital, where now instead of those orbitals that we learned, the S and P's and the D's and so, now we get an orbital that is a uh, combination of the two electron clouds of uh, an atom. And this is a model right here of hydrogen bonding to itself. Kind of like this H with a bond to an H. All right. And then this stuff right here, we've already gone over this. Electrons are repelling. Protons are repelling. Uh, however, protons are attracting electrons, and so this bond occurs at just the right point where the uh, attraction is a little bit greater than the repulsion. Actually, I should say where the, the attractions are about the same, and you have this distance right in here between the nuclei. All right, And that has to do with energy, so let's go to our energy diagram. Here's an example. Let's say we have two atoms together. Now, these are nonmetals. It could be a hydrogen and a hydrogen, just to make it easy for us. And they're floating around with just one valence electron. Well, that one valence electron is not a most stable situation. As you know, hydrogen needs two to fill up the first energy level, right? So what happens is they start to come together. And as they come together... Remember, we talked about ground state and excited state. Well, everything is happening to get to a more stable situation. And actually, let me, let me pull that out rather than just saying it because you'll want to write this down. Atoms become more stable when they form a covalent bond. So they're coming together. And as you can see the energy diagram, here's zero and here's less than zero. So if you're less than zero, you're more you're more stable than uh, at zero. So as they're getting closer together, their potential energy is decreasing until they come to this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Until they come to this point right here, where there is this attraction, just like this this part right here, this attraction and repulsion, the perfect spot where the forces are just right, and you've made this molecular orbital where they are sharing. And that is an important thing. That's what's going on. So they, they become at a lower energy state. And since they've lost energy, that energy is going to be given off. So when bonds are formed, and this is an important concept, energy is released. Can you imagine what happens when bonds are broken. In other words, what I want to do is I want to take these two these two atoms right here and I want to split them and get them back up to there. 
What does that take? Well, that takes energy in. Okay? So energy has to go in to get uh, the bonds to form. So that's what's going on with energy and stability. It's a really important concept. Two atoms or more come together, share electrons, and they're at a lower potential energy state, which is favorable. And that's the driving force behind uh, a covalent. All right, so moving on. So let's talk about uh, the next step in sharing because there's two ways of sharing. There's an equal sharing and there's an unequal sharing. And if it's an equal share, we call it a nonpolar covalent bond. All right. So in other words, uh, we've got these two atoms. They're together, and I'm going to use hydrogen because it's an easy example. And they're bonded, and this cloud... This molecular orbital is even between the two. In other words, there's no uh, pole on either side. Kind of remember like ionic bonds, we had, we had positives and negatives. But let's look at something else because this, one ha this is what happens quite often. You get a polar covalent bond. Now, pole, think of like poles of a magnet, right? So with a polar covalent bond, the shared electrons are more uh, held a little more closely to the atom with the higher electronegativity. Whoa, there's a term we haven't seen in a while. Remember what electronegativity is? Remember that 4.0 table we had? Well, we're going to use that now, actually, to figure out some bonds. So let me just kind of give you an example. Fluorine, which hopefully you remember, had an electronegativity of 4.0. All right? And maybe I have a chart there. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Here's fluorine of 4.0. Let's say it's going to bond with something like hydrogen, which is 2.1. All right? Well, if it bonds to hydrogen... The electrons, I'm going to draw the molecular orbital kind of as a dot. The electron cloud is greater around the fluorine than it is around the hydrogen. All right? And again, remember, these orbitals are just the, the high area probability where we'd find electrons. So what happens is if at any one time I'm looking at this atom, it's most likely more negative on this end and more positive on this end. And you'll see in the books a delta symbol positive, that's a lowercase delta, and a delta symbol negative. So what happens is this molecule is actually polar. And that's important because it has uh, a lot to do with the properties of that molecule based on whether it's polar or nonpolar. And we'll get into what it does. It has to do with melting point, and boiling point, and vapor pressure, and all sorts of things. Um, so that's the that's what's going on when you have an unequal sharing of electrons. And then of course our ionic bond, which we know oops, we know very well from the last chapter, an ionic bond, the difference in electronegativity is high enough to strip an electron from an atom. In other words, as you know, if I'm if I'm an atom here, uh let's say let's say I'm a sodium atom, right? It had that one valence electron out here and I'm a chlorine atom and it had those seven right this electron right here uh, would actually be stripped and come over here to make chlorine negative and sodium positive. That's just a quick review. You guys remember that stuff. I know you do. So we've kind of got three types of bonding we're dealing with. Well, not really. Well, yeah, let's just go three times. We've got ionic bond, and then you have covalent bond. And covalent bonds can be separated into two subcategories. One that is polar, where you have an unequal sharing, and one is nonpolar.